Hello, hi. I'm uh, Bernie B, and welcome to my my office space. This um, this yeah, this is me. <laughs> this is me surrounded by my favourite things um, in a space that is currently a work in progress. Um, it's a space that my husband is setting me up because it's a multi-use space. So it's a, my room, my creative art room, which now has a beautiful desk space, recording space in the corner. Nice blackboard up here. I'm going to show you around another day, but it has all my stained glass in rainbow colours there and some tables for me to um, uh, teach at and to create at just there and then it has all my office shelving on this side but I am just in this little space um, really saying hi just to test this equipment uh, my friend Luke who is amazing and I couldn't do this without him has come along and he's set me up um, some sound recording the intention is that I will start uh, recording for you um, and talking about things that I genuinely believe will help some of you um, because they'll resonate because you'll realize that you're not alone with that thought process that that work or weird idiosyncrasy is quite normal or not unique to you um, I have two phrases one is um, authentically alternative I believe in um, being as authentic as I can in my unique alternative way and that we are all extraordinarily ordinary and we all we're all of that means to me that means that we're all amazing and unique um, and what makes us ordinary is that we are all unique like every you know if you're feeling something that's weird and unusual and you feel like you're alone I guarantee you're not so Everything that I talk about will be underpinned with um, this layer of authenticity. I will talk about my cock-ups and my failings and my embarrassing moments, um, and my self-doubt, and my imposter. Uh, you'll see me tidy with my makeup on you'll see me scruffy without you'll see me in my dressing gown uh looking a bit amused and confused um and I will what my intention is for this space or whatever space I'm speaking from is to talk in an unscripted way based on a monthly or six weekly a period of time umbrella theme the theme that I'm focusing on um, ironically as my beginning theme is endings and my overarching umbrella title is endings matter um, if you don't know me my name is Bernice Benton I go as Bernie B the alternative celebrant full life celebrant uh, I'm also a stained glass artist and teacher. Uh, I run a guest house in the middle of Wales. Um, I'm in rural Wales in a place called Clinuted Wells, which is the home of some very weird and alternative events like the World Bog Snorkeling and the Man vs. Horse Marathon and the Real Al Wobble. And I, um, they wheel me out to uh, commentate at those events and I am available to commentate events as well. Um, so I'm a creative person with a space where I welcome guests into my home and they stay with us basically as if they're friends in our home. It's uh, my tagline for b and is uh, welcome to our home and basically you're when you're here you're part of our family. That's that bit. I'm a uh, full life alternative celebrant so I officiate predominantly um, end of life celebrations that might be a funeral at a cemetery or crematorium or a natural burial ground or um, it might be a memorial um, in a hotel in a garden it might be a laying of ashes somewhere completely different on a mountainside on a beach uh, uh, 
in a woodland, in a garden. Um, it might be a remembrance uh, sometime after that. Um, so as a, as a celebrant for funerals and, and end of life, that's what I do. As a full life celebrant, I will also celebrate any of those moments within life that punctuate your life. Be that traditional things like uh, namings or weddings or vow renewals, but it could be anything else. It could be burying the dead name um, for someone within the LGBTQ community who, who just has, has transitioned and wants to bookmark that. It could be um, uh, celebrations for a throuple. It could be a... Um, uh, a milestone like a uh, recovery from a cancer trauma. It could be a divorce celebration of freedom, that new part of your life where you're saying goodbye to one chapter and you're starting another. It could be uh, when you find yourself entering your third age and you suddenly find that you have this opportunity to change everything. Your children have left home. If you've got children, you've moved to a different space. You're, you and your husband find yourself with some freedom because you've retired. It could be anything really that bookmarks a moment in your life because I am a firm believer in all of those moments. Our life is a book. You take a book and you read it and you get to an end of a chapter and you pause. It signifies that at that moment something is going to change or something is going to move on. And all of the chapters are connected to create the novel of your life. But each part is significant in its own right. And I genuinely believe that we should bookmark those. And now some people we do that. Sometimes you do that. You go out for a meal or you'll go, oh, you know, congratulations, or I love you, or well done you, or um, you buy a card and you send a card, and you know, and you bookmark those moments in a in a small way. What I'm saying is that life is short, and we should really take time to bookmark those moments and wallow in them a little bit, whether they are the an ending of something that starts a new beginning or a change of direction um, in your life where you take your existing life with you or, or just some momentous change in your dynamic. Those moments are worth going, hey, hang on a minute. Here we are. We have, look where we began. Look what we've been through. Look where we are now look what we're about to do let us take a moment and let's do more than just say thanks very much or send a card or or have a meal out let it us create some sort of ritual around that and a lot of what I talk about will be um, ritual based because the more I do this job as a celebrant the more important uh, I come to realize ritual is within that and that doesn't have to mean traditional ritual it, it, a ritual is that moment where you do something hand over something sign something light something bury something say some words create a um an action that connects that moment to that issue and signifies either a beginning or an end or a change of direction. And I think that ritual is so important in our life and it helps us to step over the obstacles or the fences or the, you know, step over them in a, you know, and, you know, and, and separate them. And that doesn't mean forget them. It means um, define them. Yeah, it's really important to define things that are important to us in our lives and, and create something around them that helps us make sense of them in our minds. You know, And I find that if you don't do that, and the last few years has become really, um, that's become really important, made it really highlight it really. If you do not 
get the chance to do that. And in COVID, people didn't get the chance to do that. They didn't get the chance to say goodbye in the way they wanted. They didn't get the chance to acknowledge um, how important certain people were or how um, tragic the moment was. And I think that what we will find over the next few years is that we have a lot of PTSD as a result of not having had the opportunity to ritualise those moments that really matter and that doesn't mean you have to do something in a big way it really doesn't but it does mean that you have the opportunity to say something at that moment and enact something at that moment or at a different moment in relation to that moment that helps your brain make sense of it it's really hard to come to terms with grief and loss if you don't ever get to say goodbye. It's like it didn't happen. Your brain will play tricks on you. I mean, I'm just trying to think back. When I was a child, my grandparents died at different times from natural causes, old age predominantly. And um, each time one of them died... I didn't go to the funeral. My family thought that children and funerals didn't belong together. We didn't see them very often in life. We maybe saw them a couple of times a year. So knowing they died and understanding what that meant and accepting that they were, were not there never really happened in my life. And I think that this misconception that um, children don't belong at end of life is. Um, is not wrong because there is no right or wrong. I think it's be some, because we have created this um, separation between and detachment and and kind of cloud mist veil around death. Death is a really normal part of life. We're all born. Some of us get married, but we all talk about marriage. Some of us get divorced. We all talk about divorce. Some of us graduate. We all talk about graduation. Some of us have children. We talk about celebrating children. All of us, all of us die. And we should talk about death. But it has become this, this thing, this hushed, understood detached thing that other people deal with that we don't talk about and I think that is why we're so fearful of it and that is why we are so detached from it um, and I think isn't it awful that something that is going to affect every single one of us even if we isolate ourselves from everybody else and had no friends and no family and no connections we ourselves will die Death will come to every single one of us and to live our life in fear of the end is a really sad thing. We need to have the conversations that um, bring it back into our control, into our understanding, into our normality so it's less frightening. Um the industry has taken it away from us. You know, it used to be, you know, if you go back far enough, um, it was traditionally, it was the, the women, the matriarchs within a community who, who sat with the dying, who comforted the family, who um, washed the body, who prepared the body. People would sit in vigil with the body, the family would the, the the deceased would be in the home, people would sit around and talk to the deceased, the children would witness that. Um, and I think that we need to um, be uh, aware of that. I'm just going to pause because the battery's... I'm going to plug myself in. So as I was saying, uh, Community is so important to uh, to dying, the dying press and death. In the historically, we always had um, family around. The matriarchs would look after the dying and the sick. The family would be aware of that. They would they would sit vigil. They would be there. They would help. Um, when someone died, they weren't whisked away from the home. They would be there. People would visit. Um, 
we lived in smaller communities, so um, you would know your neighbours, your neighbours and your community would support you. You would be involved in, in, in witnessing death and helping in grief. And that happens so much less now, which makes it all the more important to reconnect with that and to bring death back into the conversation. Um, you know, and, and there are lots of um, different types of death. And what we're going to try and aim for, and we don't always get, is we want a good death. What does that mean? I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about a um, ritual. I'm going to talk about um, funerals, the cost of funerals, the expectations of funeral, uh, what's normal in grief. Here's a hint. Nothing. Nothing is normal. Whatever it is you're feeling on a particular day and however you're reacting on that particular day, that's normal. And that could be anything. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to, uh, I'm going to say we, I'm going to talk about it and I'll answer your questions if I have them. We're going to talk about the cost of funerals, the expectations. We're going to talk about alternative things that you can do. Um, we're going to talk about uh, eco and expectation. We're going to talk about grief. We're going to talk about different types of loss, you know, terminal illness. We're going to talk about um, suicide. Um and I will give you warnings uh, when we do that. We're going to talk about support and all those things. And we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about those in an unscripted way. I'm just going to chat. Um, and I am going to take your lead on conversations, hopefully ask answer questions if you have them. And I'm talking from a non-medical, non-counselling viewpoint. I'm talking as uh my authentic self based on the lessons i am continuing to learn as a celebrant and an end of life doula in training and a human being with all the same fears that all of you have that i experience in my own unique way um and we're going to try and normalize these things and and um, raise a bit more awareness and start having conversations and then um and we're gonna what i want to do is focus on endings matter as my beginning topic uh for the next four weeks or so and i say or so because on the from the 4th to the 8th of december it's national grief awareness week um and the good grief trust uh, have a lot of things going on. If you go to their charity, Good Grief Trust, I think it's goodgrieftrust.org, but if you put it in Good Grief Trust, and I'll put it in the tags uh, on any posts that this is included in, uh, we can talk about they are, it was set up by um, a lady who found that there was no support for grief and it's so it's grieving people supporting grieving people um and it's a really great charity um and at some point in that week i will be hosting a pop-up cafe in my local area to um and inviting people who are grieving and people who support those who are grieving and uh members of the community and invite them together together for a cup of tea and just an informal chat and and perhaps providing access to some signposting you can't fix grief grief is a journey that you can't avoid traveling um but what you can do is get support so that you don't have to travel it alone and have those conversations and that's where i'm at really uh, so do you want me to show you around just stu my studio I want to show you this space. So I have lived in Clinuted Wells for nearly 19 years. And this room is the only room in the house that has never been decorated. And it still isn't. <laughs> but my partner of 29 years has been 
diligently putting up shelves and sealing the floors and covering up spaces so that it is now an efficient working space for me. And this particular bit, my desk, I'm surrounded by some of my favourite things. So behind me, you can't see it, but behind me I've got a, um, a pin board and on that I've got um, photos and uh, cards from people and um, actually the John Wesley rules. Do you know what those are? And I, I'm not a religious person, I, uh, I'm an atheist, but my mother-in-law was a Methodist um, and the Methodist uh, Methodism is based on the John Wesley rules, which are sound rules to live by whether you are religious or not. Basically, it says, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all of the people you can as long as ever you can. God, if we all lived like that, wouldn't that be great? And uh, yeah, that is there. And I thank her and that is my memory of her. I think that everybody that we meet in our life leaves a little ripple in the sea of our lives. And that is um, a really strong ripple that she has left in mine. So what's surrounding me? Oh yes, on my pin board. I can reach. An old Mother's Day card. <laughs> I choose my mother's, uh, like I choose my Mother's Day cards, like I choose my nursing home. Cheap and in a hurry. <laughs> Love my son. Um, this little pot is made um, with snowdrops. Snowdrops are my favourite thing. I have a little tattoo of snowdrops on my wrist made by um, Amanda Rose this little cup here with my pencils in it I made at um, Alex All Press's uh, studio in Bilth my husband and I had a day doing pottery wheel work and it's a real memory of that day that's a really good these flowers here I received this weekend from a uh, grieving family who'd had the most tragic loss and then took time out of their day to come over and thank me with those flowers. And I cannot tell you, it makes me want to cry every time how humble that makes me feel. Um, I have those there. I've got them. Um, this little book by Charles Davis Ceremonies. He is um, another member of the AOIC, Suggestions and Readings for Funerals. And I love it because I love the artwork, but also I met him at an Association of Independent Celebrants conference a few weeks ago, and he's the nicest, nicest person. To have his book is just lovely. My hero. Brené Brown, Rising Strong. I use that a lot in my um, belief system on life. And it's it basically says we don't fail, we fall. And when we fall, we can get back up and start again. Um, I have my natural burial thing. I have um, these. These are my value charters that I give to um, families, funeral directors, venues, which and it talks about what, um, who I am, what I do, what my qualifications are, what people think about me. But it's also it's like a little contract, which says, "I am committed to telling your story, sharing your memories." and creating rituals that ensure all wishes for your ceremony are fulfilled. I am aware of the financial and emotional commitment you have met, made to me and trust you, to have you, trust you have placed in me, and I guarantee you my total consideration support 
and professionalism throughout. And that is one of the many lessons I have learned from my very good friend, mentor and trainer, uh, Dinah Liversidge. And uh, it's thanks to her that I have created those. It's a little sketch again, Amanda Rose. She's so talented and lovely. I love having that. <laughs> Chicken theme, Liz Tia. You see that? Good friends are cheaper than therapy. That was um B and B guests of mine. Gave that to me. And I had chickens at the time. I haven't got any at the moment, but I had chickens at the time. And that's always oh I've got a pile here. <laughs> a pile of dried plane leaves, which I picked up in Finsbury Circus uh last autumn. I just finished recording uh well, last the November, yeah, November. I just finished recording uh, Ultimate Wedding Planner with BBC Two, and I'd gone to London to spend some time with Toby Hawker, who has become an amazing friend um, since that. And we were walking through Finsbury uh, Circus, which is incidentally where John and I had one of our I had our very first date twenty nine years ago, and there was loads of plain leaves and I just had to pick some of my favourites up and then they're sat still on my desk a year later. This was sent to me by a B&B guest, very good friend. Um, it's by a lady called Kez Jones, but the friend who sent it to me um, it stays in our B&B and it's just, I just love it. Up there, you can see that? That's a stained glass panel that I created for an exhibition that I did, um, an art exhibition, my only solo art exhibition. And I, it was called, um, uh, oh my goodness, what was it called? Out of the Darkness Comes the Light, which is quite poignant actually because my life then moved into... Um, becoming a celebrant I never thought of that before you know and my whole you know and yeah and funerals um out of the darkness comes but comes the light is is quite a profound thing but it's basically it's our solar system uh, and the uh frame was made by a, a blacksmith in Ireland who I sent a paper cut out of it and he created that for me behind me here is a one of two dream catchers again amanda rose you're so talented amanda um i love dearly she must be one of the the kindest and gentlest people and most authentic people i know and she made me two big dream catchers for um for me to use for ceremonies and and what have you but i absolutely love them because she designed them and made them for me just, you know, things, little things that are just so precious, little things. And just So I sit here surrounded by lots of little things, this. How lovely is that? A little gift from uh, my friend Dinah. Oh, I have to show you this. There is a an artist who, sorry, excuse me. There's an artist who um, lives in the area and her name is Rachel Blakeway and she makes all sorts of things from uh, rubbish. So this has been made from all sorts of packaging and, and rubbish. But look, it's a little mini-me Welsh angel. <laughs> uh, I've bought so much from her. Um, she, I've commissioned her for so many things. She's an amazing woman and that just makes me smile. And this little thing here, which I'll have to share with you. It, it, I don't even get, I, it was in someone's, it was being thrown out. How funny is it? Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. It's just, I don't know, it just is really funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a little treasured thing, just makes me really smile. 
Um, but just things, yeah, just... I think you should always be uh, surrounded by your treasure. And it doesn't have to be valuable treasure. It just has to be little memories. Um, yes, that's me. So I'm Bernie B. I am Bernie B, the alternative celebrant. Bernie B, full life celebrant. And I plan to talk more in an unscripted way about things that I'm passionate about and I plan to do that in as honest and authentic a way as I can with the view that what I have to say might resonate with some of you and help you and I would love and welcome any feedback you have, any thoughts um, that might trigger a conversation um, any conversations you want to have, I would love to have those with you. Uh, so, yeah, that's me. This is my space. I thank Luke for setting it up. Uh, I thank you uh, for listening because you must be if you're hearing this. <laughs> and uh, I thank my partner, John, for creating this magical space for me within our home that means that I can have a bit of space where I can think clearly, where I can create, where I can write, where I can talk, where I can share, where I can give um, back. And I go back to uh, John Wesley, do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. I look forward to talking to you again.